morning. You know, most things in life that we have that are good also have a great potential to harm us. Uh, they have a shadow side to them. Uh, one of them is food. It's a wonderful blessing of God. God gave it to us as a means of, uh, we enjoy it. There's so much pleasantness in food, so enjoyable it is for strength. And uh, But it also has a, a potential harm in it. Uh, what did I read? One doctor was an old Egyptian, 3,500 years ago, the doctor says, a man, man can live on a quarter of what he eats, and we doctors live on the other three quarters. So despite the warnings, people continue to dig their grave with a knife and fork. Food can cause harm. Take the Garden of Eden, uh, paradise. It was food that caused the fall. Uh, Eve saw that the fruit was good to eat and for taste, and she looked at it, and she ate it, and Adam ate it. And then it's, it's tremendous to think that all the sin, the sickness, the death, the disease in the world came through that food. We see it a few more times in the Bible. We see it with Isaac when he favors Esau above Jacob for no other reason that, but that Esau made pleasant food, even though Jacob had the call on his life. And, uh, and then uh, Esau, as he gets older, he's hungry. And uh, just had missed his, you know, it's not that he's starving for a few days. He's just hungry, missed a meal. And Jacob realizes that he's a kind of man, uh, pushes his appetite, realizes, and tricks him and sells him uh, a bowl of lentil soup for uh, uh, his birthright, which meant the leadership of the family, the wider family, and also the spiritual leadership of the family, and he sold it for a bowl of lentil soup. We see with Eli and his sons, part of what the trouble was in the synagogue was they kept taking the best of the food from the others. So it is there. It's a wonderful blessing. You know, Paul said that uh, he was, he lived a soldierly kind of life in his discipline, a kind of athlete. He said, I pummel my body, I buff it and bring it into subjection. I make it my slave and I won't be a slave of my body. But he wasn't too strict on it either. He warns in Timothy, he says, uh, uh, there are those that teach that you forbid you to eat certain types of food and forbid for marriage. But he says, all the food is given by God and is to be received with thanksgiving and marriage also. Enjoy your food, receive it with thanksgiving. And, you know, these, these are the gift of God. So Paul, although he, uh, you know, disciplined himself in it, he wasn't extreme in that at all. Jesus one of the things that Luke says, that they say in Luke's gospel, he's always either going to a meal, at a meal, or coming from a meal, that he fellowshiped, and he fellowshiped around food. And the Last Supper was that beautiful feast that he loved, and had with great desire, I desire to have this with you. Food's a wonderful blessing. But it can also be, as we have said, a cause of harm. Like any good thing in life, uh, it has a shadow side to it. God has given us fasting, and it is a Christian discipline, uh, a kind of lost one, lost partly because of the asceticism, this kind of overly strict religiosity that happened for so many hundreds of years where people were, you know, really strict on people. So it got lost of that. And then also because of the way things are pushed today. If you don't have three square meals a day and snacks in between, you'll starve to death. So these reasons, it's kind of fallen aside a lot. But it was given of God. We can say this, like, it's not commanded. There's nowhere in the Bible that fasting is directly commanded. There are kind of uh, references to it. Like in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, when you fast. He doesn't say if you fast. So he expects it, but he doesn't command it. And it's not commanded because uh, it seems... Uh, we are legalistic, and as legalistic people, just as the Pharisees were, and they will impose it on people, impose it on people in unwise ways. It's not wise for everyone to fast, or it's certainly not wise for people to fast on every occasion because health reasons, uh, certain duties would make it very difficult for them to do, and it's just not wise. 
Another reason is the boasting that the Pharisees uh, indulged in, boasting of how much they gave, the money, how much they prayed, how much they fasted, and this sort of boasting and comparing. So uh, it's not commanded. Secondly, it's private. When you pray, do it in secret. When you fast, do it unto your Father in secret. And the privacy of it is people won't judge you. People won't compare you. It's between you and God. And, you know, uh, so you're free from boasting and you're free from being compared and judged and criticized. So it's just before your Father, which is in heaven. So uh, what is fasting? Fasting is uh, the normal fast in the Bible is fasting from food. Uh, generally not water, uh, though there is what they call a total fast, where it's fasting from food and water. You see it in the book of Esther when the nation is threatened by uh, to be destroyed. Esther and Mordecai f uh, have fast for three days of food and water. Uh, we see it also with Ezra. He fasts for food and water as they have to take the perilous journey from Babylon back to uh, Jerusalem. But generally, it's a fast from food, uh, uh, solid or liquid, meaning soups, fruit juices are not uh, had at all, just no food. Uh, they do talk of, some people talk of having a technology fast and fasting from Instagram and fasting from YouTube, you know, which can be helpful. Uh, but this is not the fast uh, God talks about in the Bible. As one person says, when your doctor says to you, if a person's having surgery, I want you to take a 24-hour fast before the surgery and then come in. So you come in the next day, ready for the surgery, and the doctor says, have you fasted? So, yep, I haven't touched Instagram for 24 hours, nor YouTube. And then the doctor means food, and so does the Bible. So uh, we fast for food for those reasons. Why? Why do you fast? Well, uh, it is to get you closer to God is one reason. Another is to be heard of God of some matter that is important to you to the church to your family you read of the man who had the boy who was epileptic and caused by an evil spirit and said this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting and so um, uh, for an urgent need like that like esther and they prayed and fasted they fasted for those three days because there was the threat of the destruction of the jewish people ezra the dangers of the perilous journey from Babylon through banded territory carrying all the treasures of Egypt. It can be in a church, there is conflict in a church, there's division, the there's a growing worldliness, there is a uh, more backslidings, there is anything like that. A church can decide. Or a church just for pure spiritual growth and blessing of God, an increase of God in the life of the church or some major activity that the church is undertaking. So many reasons of, of this nature. So, uh, okay, just some, if you'll excuse the expression, food for thought. Okay, have a good day. Bye-bye.